Hey, and welcome to the coding portion of a doubling linked list. So our, implementa our implementation is going to be using Sentinel nodes. And if you're not sure what that is or what those are, then go ahead and look at the explanation video. But really, all they are just dummy nodes. They don't hold any value. And we're using them because it's going to make the insertion and deletion the utility methods easier to code. And the logic is a little bit simpler. All right, so the first thing we need to do is actually create the node class. So go ahead and create a doubly linked list node class. And this is going to hold three fields. Now remember, a double linked list has a previous and a next reference as well. So the first one is we want to uh, get the value. The first field is we want the value we want to hold. The next one is the uh, previous reference. And then the third one is the next reference that this node's gonna have. So let's create the constructor, pass in three arguments, the value, uh, the previous reference, and then the next reference. Okay, so we're gonna say this.value equals value we're passing in, this.prev equals previous, and this.next equals next. All right, then the next thing is we're just going, I'm just going to uh, create the getter and setters. And if you don't have, if you're not using an IDE, and you're just using a text editor that doesn't have a shortcut to, uh, to implement the getter and setters for you, um, just go ahead and pause the video and copy these, okay? So the next thing is we are going to be creating uh, the actual doubly linked list class. So I'm going to say doubly linked list. So we need to have uh, three fields for here as well. The, the two nodes, so we need to have a reference for the header and the trailer node, which are the Sentinel nodes, okay? So they're not gonna hold any value, they're just, they're there for, um, for the coding and the logic to make it a little simpler. So I'm gonna say private tail node header and private link list node trailer. And then we want to we want to keep the size of the list, right? So we do need to create a constructor because we need to initialize the header and trailer references to uh, point to each other. So we're say public doubly linked list. No need to pass any arguments. Uh, header equals new doubly linked list node. So this we need three three arguments. The first one is the value. These are Sentinel nodes. So they have a value of null because they don't hold any data ever. The header won't ever have a previous reference. It, now it will have a next reference, which will be the trailer, but we haven't instantiated the trailer yet. So we have to do that on the third line. So we'll get there. The trailer equals new double linked list node has a null value because it doesn't hold any data. Its previous reference is gonna be the header and then its next reference is null because it's the last, it's the actual last node in the list. So we're gonna say header.set next to the trailer. All right, so we kind of got the setup out of the way. Let's uh, start writing our methods, All right? Well, the first few were pretty simple. The first one is just wanna return the size of the list. So public int get size, just return size. And then the next one is we want to check if the list is empty or not. So we're going to say public uh, boolean. Sorry, because uh, we're going to turn true if it is empty, false otherwise. So return size equals zero. If the size is equal to zero, turn true because it is empty. And then otherwise false. So the next two methods we are going to, uh, we're going to return, we're going to, return the first and the last node's value or the data it's holding in the list, okay? So we're gonna say public integer because all the nodes hold an integer value. Uh, and then we're gonna call this first because we just wanna return, not do anything with it. We're just returning the value that's held into uh, the first node, first node of the list, okay? So, but first we need to check if it's empty. If it's empty, just return null. Um, otherwise, we're going to say return header dot get 
next. Oops, dot get value. The next one is last. So we're gonna say if is empty, return null. Otherwise, we're gonna return trailer dot get previous dot dot get value. So since the trailer is the the last node in the list, it's a sentinel node though, so it doesn't hold any data. We need to get the node before it, which is the last node in the list that actually holds data. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so we kind of got the simpler methods out of the way. So the next two are going to be uh, adding to the first and then adding to the end of the list. Now when we add to the first, we're gonna be adding in between the header settle node and then the node after it, okay? And then the same thing for the trailer, or same thing for the end. So when we add last, we're gonna be adding between the trailer node, which is the sentinel node, and then the one before it, which is the last node that holds data in the list. So we're gonna say public um, void, we don't need to return anything. So we're say add first. Now we need to pass in the value we want this new node to hold. And this is where we're going to be um, using our utility method, our general utility method for inserting, um, inserting a new node. And we're calling it add between because we're always adding between two nodes in this implementation of a double link list, all right? So the first thing we want to pass in is the value because we're adding first, we want to add it in between the header sentinel node and then the node after that. All right, and we're gonna do the same thing for add last. Pass in just one argument, which is the value we want the new node to hold. We're gonna say add between. First argument is gonna be the value. So the second argument is the previous reference. So when we want to add last, the previous reference is going to be trailer dot get previous. So we want to add it in between uh, the last in the list that holds data and then the trailer node. All right, so let's go ahead and implement this now. So we're going to say private void add between <laughs> takes three arguments as um, as we've already seen uh, whenever it's invoked. Um, and the add first and add last methods. So the first one is the value, you want the, new, the value we want the new node to hold. Second one is the previous reference. So we're gonna call, we're gonna call that predecessor. And then the next one is the node after the node we wanna insert. So we're gonna call that successor. All right. So what do we need to do? Well, first off, we need to create this new node. We're gonna call it newest. We're gonna say new DLL node takes in three values or three arguments. First one is the value. It's kind of uh, it's kind of in line with uh, the arguments that we're passing into the add between method. So we're passing in the value we want it to hold, the previous reference for this new node, and the next reference for the node. All right, which is going to be the nodes we're passing in. So if we're adding first, we're going to pass in. The head, this is predecessor is going to be the header, the, the sentinel node, and the successor is going to be the node after that. So we're going to add it right in between there. So then um, the next, the last thing we need to do is we need to set the uh, predecessor and the successor. They're still referencing each other. So now we need to have them reference the new node. So we're going to say predecessor dot set next newest. So this newest node we just created. And then the successor dot set previous to the newest node we just created. And then the last thing is incrementing the size of the list. Okay, so we're down to the last operation, which is deletion. So whenever we remove from, an, uh, from a, a double link list with this implementation, if the size is zero, we still have the header and trailer sentinel nodes, but those can't be removed. They're always staying there. So we just return null if the size of the list is zero. So we'll do that check first, but then we're gonna be using the general utility method for deletion, kind of like what we did with for inserting. So we're gonna say public 
integer remove first. No, don't we don't need to pass any arguments. Um, if is empty, return null. Otherwise, return remove. And we're gonna the the first in the list that holds data is gonna be right after the trailer or right after the header. So get next. All right, and we're gonna do the same thing for removing the last node. If is empty, return null. And then otherwise, we're gonna say return remove trailer dot get previous. Okay. So now let's go ahead and implement that method. Again, it's gonna be private because we don't want this method invoked. We just uh we just want um, them to call remove first or remove last and without unknowing the underlying implementation of the actual remove. So we're gonna say private integer, we need to return integer because uh, because we are in the remove first and remove last method. So remove and we're just passing in, we're just passing in the node that it's going to be removed, okay? So the first thing we need to do is we're going to set two local variables, one for the predecessor of the node we're moving and one for the successor of the node we're removing. So we're going to say deal node predecessor equals node dot get previous. And then a successor equals node dot get next. All right. And you'll see why we need to do this. So the predecessor and successor to the node we're removing. So the one before it and the one after it. Those are still referencing each other. So we need to change the references to reference, or no, I'm sorry. They're still referencing the node that we want to remove. So we need to have them reference each other instead. So we're going to say predecessor dot set next to the successor. And then successor dot set previous to the predecessor. And then we're going to uh, decrease the size. And then we're going to return the node that we passed in. We're going to return, we're going to return its value. All right, and that's, and that's that. So we finished up all of our operations. The next, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to recreate a print, a print method, and then we're going to test it. So we need a public void print list. You can implement this kind of any way you want to. I'm going to kind of make it a little verbose just so you can see in the printout exactly what's happening. Um, but I'm not too worried about uh, the prettiness of this method. So if it's empty, I just want to say list is empty. Otherwise, I'm going to start out with out.print, just print, uh, traversing the list. And then we start out with, we need a node to start out with, and that node would be the one after the header sentinel node. So node start equals header dot get next. So this is the first, whoops. Sorry about that. So this is the first node that's holding data in the list. So while start does not equal trailer, you might you might want to say you, you might think you should say while start does not equal null, which wouldn't be incorrect. But the problem is the trailer central node exists, and when it gets there, it'll print it out, and that's just going to be null. So the last node in the list is going to be null, and you could do that. I'm just not worried about that. So while um, while start does not equal trailer, that, that'll just make sure that it doesn't print out the trailer node. All right, so we're going to say system.out.print uh, start.getValue. Add a space there. And then I'm going to say start. We want to, we want to, we want the, that start node or any node that we're at this point, we want it to now be the next reference. So you can start dot get next. And then after we're done, I'm gonna say, just to kind of 
make sure, first off, new line. This is a shortcut for a new line. Instead of doing like just a, a system dot out print line. So uh, we're gonna have a new line and I'm gonna return the size of it just so, just so to be extra sure that this is working. The size of the list, size. Okay. All right, that's it. So we're gonna go back to our main method. We're gonna go ahead and instantiate this equals new doubly linked list. All right, so let's do some testing. We were gonna, let's add first one. Let's add first again, 10. And then let's add to the end 25 and then print. So we're adding first one, and then we're adding first again, 10. So right now the list should be 10, one. Then when we add last, it should be 10, one, 25. That should be the printout. Let's hope that works. So 10, one, 25, and the size of the list is three. All right, good, that worked so far. Let's, uh, let's add again, let's add last 50. And then let's remove first. So we add last 50, it should be 10, 1, 25, 50. But then when we remove from the first, it remove, that means we're removing 10. So it should be 1, 25, 50 with, um, with a size of still, a size of three for the list still. 1, 25, 50. Okay, good, that worked. Now let's test, let's try to remove First, let's do this five times. So this is why we have checks in our in our methods. So if we didn't have the checks, we would uh, end up getting a null pointer exception. So remove first. We do this five times. It's going to work the first three times, and the next two times it's still going to work, but it's going to return null, and that means it's not going to go further down that method and decrement the size of the list either. So we should just say, uh, this should just say the list is empty on when we traverse the third time. Okay. So let's go ahead and do one more thing to make sure. We're gonna add one again. Now, just to make sure it didn't decrement the actual size of the list to like negative two, we wanna add first and we print the list. The size, of, or when we traverse the list, should just be one and the size should be one. On the fourth, on the fourth through. Yep, there we go. All right, so that worked. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this coding section. I hope you understood it enough. If not, if you have any questions or comments that need clarification, uh, put them down below, and I'll get to them as soon as possible. All right, I'll see you guys next time.